Hey, what is happening, guys? So this is part two of learning JavaScript by creating a fun game. I think it's fun. I love games. Uh, if you didn't see part one, I'm going to link, leave a link in the description below. And I was going to leave a link in the description below to how to set up all this, uh, this environment. Okay. So Visual Studio Code and the extensions that I'm using and so far and so on. So let's take a look at what we did last time. Let's change the scene. There we go. So last time we did, what did we do? Yeah, we created our scene. So our uh, start game. Let me actually make this larger. Zoom in. There we go. We had our start button, which we press, press our start button. Then we have our players. And also we have our buttons down here, our action buttons. Okay. Uh, we are trying this time. Let me make this smaller a bit to achieve a attack. So we're going to focus on the attack, this attack right here, okay? This will always generate a random attack between uh, certain numbers. So you gotta think about this as we're going to create essentially a random function which will generate each time some one of the players attacks a random number between an interval, okay? And yeah, we need to generate that number. We need to link up the button to actually generate that, uh, to actually engage that function. So we're going to use the DOM again, link up, link up uh, our functions to it, create the function. We will also create then a, uh, we're going to modify the DOM exactly because we're going to create elements. As soon as we attack, we're going to create an element that will be displayed. The, the element will be created. And as soon as the, um, the action is done, the element will disappear again. Because if you take again a look in our attack right here, so if I attack, actually with the other player, the six and one that you just saw, and now here, minus six and minus two, hey, still the same attack, minus five. Okay, so when that is generated, an element appears and then it disappears. So we're going to do something there. We're going to create and then make an element disappear again. Uh, yeah, we also need to link up our life. So we'll also need, need to link up this, this place right here, this, the, the stats of the player. So if we actually, let me make an attack. So we have 68, uh, 86 life. And if I attack, then we only have eight, uh, 82. Okay. This is also done by manipulating, this is also done by manipulating our DOM. And as you can see, it refreshes. So yeah, we have a lot of, a uh, lot of stuff to do. So let's get into it. So see you soon. Okay. Yeah. So as you can probably see, we have a lot of stuff to do. Also, I want to create a few colors within JavaScript and use them for our attack, our defense, our, uh, heal and so far and so on. So we will get started first of all, by creating this colors and I'm going to set them. And this is also a good example for uh, using let and const as variables. So let's get started with the colors. I'm going to first of all, create the damage color. So I'm going to go with let and I'm using let because it is possible that sometime in the future, we want to reassign these colors. We want to reassign the value of this, uh, of this variable. So let's call this normal damage and we're going to go with a it's equal to the string of hash so i'm going to use a hexadecimal color ff0039 so this will be our damage color it is actually just a red color we will also have um well, elemental colors we're not going to use yet but we will use later on armor. Hmm, should I create this right now? I think I'm going to use it. So let's create armor at least. At least we have it. Armor color. Okay, this will be a string. I'll say hexadecimal of hash. Here what I create a hash outside of a string. There you go. Hash and it was F F5, 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 that's it. Okay, next up we have a player index. So what are these index actually? 
Well, if we take a look in our HTML, uh, the index and also you know finished project, not completely finished. When I attack with player one, this is player one, and this is player two, I'll take a look at player two. Okay, this right here, our index, and let me defend and also attack and defend and attack and defend. I want to generate a bit of mana. So now when I'm going to heal, you'll see I'm going to lose mana that will be with minus and blue and gain, gain life, which will be plus and green. Okay, so now I healed plus six and minus five. Minus five mana and plus six health. Those were also in text. And as you can see, they appear and disappear after, after a period of time, which is created with, a, which that effect is created with the help of a time function. So if you take a look in our HTML, right here in player character container, we have this div of index and it has damage, armor, mana, and heal. So exactly as we saw right here. Now, in order to display something within this index, we need to grab, grab, grab onto them within our DOM. So let's go into our JavaScript file and within index, for each player, we have separate index. So this time I'm going to use cons because I know this will not change in time. So index and player one. Now we're going to go to our document dot and this time I'm going to use query selector. And query selector is pretty helpful here because first of all, I'm going to well, let me explain this to you. Let me just give a bit of explanation. I want within player, I want within the container of the player, as you can see this, this container player two, for example, this div ends down here, okay? Now also, I could have used a different ID for this container. So player character, index and so far and so on. But I could actually target only the ta -ta 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 -ta, player container. So within the ID of player container, which is unique, we have this index, damage, armor, mana, heal. Down here within the container of player two, we also have the same index. So I need to, I need to somehow target only within this ID, this index. And this is done using query selector. And within our query selector, we're going to first of all target the ID of container player one. We're going to copy this, go back into our JavaScript, paste this in here. And now within here, I'm going to target the class of intakes. And that's it. Because now I could, uh, let's just hit save. And if I console log index player one, actually it may also grab onto the second one. So I'm just going to copy this code and paste it on the player two and just modify this to a two and this to a two. So if I would cut out this console log, go down here, paste it in and let's console log now player one. So index player one, also let's go to within, within our project and let's open up the console. So inspect and console. So if I hit save, I should now only, hey, no, index player one, null. Because why is this? 33, uh, let me just check, did I select the class in Take no, I misspelled it. That this one intake. Okay, so there it is. And if you take a look within it, so which one did I now select? Because both of them are the same. Well, we could now click on start game, and if I hover over it, you can see I'm se I'm selecting this one. Okay, so if I would change within our console, this to one, and hover over it, actually go into the start game, 
we are now within player one. Okay, so this is working. Now we still need to select a few more things. One of them will be the damage. So we need to also select, let's go into the intake this damage, okay? So each time we're going to attack with one player, we want to display on the other player what is happening. So let's go into player one again. And up here, let's create another const and display. And we want to display damage from player one. Okay, now let's go to the document. Now, some coons, what the hell does that mean? Document dot. We're going to use query selector again. Because I want to be able to go within our rabbit hole again of uh, container player one and from that one the damage. So string hash container. Actually, let me copy this from up here. So we don't have any spelling mistakes because I'm an expert in creating spelling mistakes. So container player one and from this, we're going to select the class of DMG. Now I'm going to just save this with control C and down here control V or command because I'm on Mac now and we have our two players and just need to rename this. So control uh, command D to select both of them, command C and theoretically I should have, let's just verify this. It's save console logging and going to start game. And if I hover over it, there it is. This from player two. Okay, so this is working. Now, next up, I'm going to select the body of the player. So let's go down here. Before attack, actually, this is the attack, but no, it's still before the attack. Let's go above our console log and let's type in here another comment of player. player body and this will be the body from player one so we still need to actually I'm going to do it this way I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to remain up here so player body player body will have we'll give it a const player body, actually player one body. So I'm going to go into the document, this query selector again, actually I could use now get the element by ID. And we're going to use, we're going to select the container. So this container right here. And this should be in a string. Okay, we have our body selected now. Now we need to select to be able to select our stats. So still staying within player one. Oh, let me actually put in here comments so it would be a bit more obvious for you. This would be the end of player one. The end of player one. Yes, it's the end. Oh, let's just leave it this way. I'm still getting used to the Mac, so please excuse my typing as a as a freaking monkey because the, the, the keyboard is totally different. Totally different. It's not be better or worse, but it's different, okay? Okay, now we need to select, so another comment of player stats because we want to be able to display our stats. Now for this, I'm going to create another const player one stats pretty simple and we're going to select document and use get element by id you could use query selector it doesn't matter but for beginners i want it to be a little bit more obvious container and there should be in a string so we're selecting the container of the player why well, i just copy this Maybe a bit more easier. 
to this container. And there we go. And for th from this, we're going to select. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so from this, we are going to select the player stats. And was underscore stats. So let's see. Uh, player stats, player one stats. We copy and paste, and it's null. Hmm. I just mistyped something. So player stats. Let's go into our HTML and let's see player stats are in here. And I should be able to container player one and select the class of player stats. Why isn't this working? What have you? Still null. Oh yeah, pretty obvious because I'm trying to select multiple elements and we need to use Query selector. Sorry about that. Holy moly. Okay, there it is. Puck. Simple as that. Uh, blah, 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 body. Hey, you should be down here. The end of player one. Okay, so we can just take this to copy them and go down in our player two selectors. Go a bit up there. And there we go. Uh, let's play different. Because now it's two times, so we need to replace this and this, and we need to replace player body with player two and player two. So now we need to grab onto our actions because we have here attack defend and so in the middle we have heal so let's grab on to the attack button from player one first of all so i'm going to type in here another comment player come on player player actions so let's create a const and we're going to create a const for the first action which is attack player one. So document, again, we're going to use query selector because we want to go into our container. The ID of container player one. And from this container, we're going to select the ID of attack. And that's pretty much it. Now we need to do the same thing for player two. So let's go on the stats and there we go. Player actions, player attack. And we just want to modify this to a number two. So we have our player one and our player two attacks. Um, actually the buttons, the actions. Next up for, wait, uh, quick set on document, there is not a valid selector. Ah, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Also typed in here, class, hey, hey. What you doing? Okay, now it's working. So next up, we need to take a first of all look in our HTML. Player stats, what are these player stats? Well, <laughs> these are, if we go in here in our start game, then we have our player stats, uh, HP, armor, and mana. And these are kind of hard coded in. And I want to be able to modify them. So next up, we're going to learn about objects. And the way we create objects 
and let's go up here above the attack we're going to create our first object for our player we're going to type in a const then with a capital p i'm going to type in player one and objects are within curly brace curly braces and they composed of key value pairs so life will be the key and its value will be 100 then comma another key value pair which we defense not define woo defense and its value will be 20 another comma then we have mana and its value will be zero comma and close up and save okay so this was player one and actually player two is pretty much the same because both players starts, uh, start out with equal stats. And I actually type up here a comment. New. So let's type one in. These are player stats. So let's take this. Go down to player 2. Copy it in and change it to player 2. Now comes the fun part. We will need to create a attack. And when we are going to attack is actually after we push this button. So when we're going to click on attack, player one will attack player two. Now, what is this, this click? This click is actually an a event. And for events, JavaScript has event listeners. So let's go in here and let's type in attack player one. This is player one's attack. Okay, so this is the element that we created by selecting from the document this button. So when we click on it, player one will attack. A action will, a actual, some kind of action will happen. So let's add a event listener, add event listener. And within parentheses, we are going to listen for a click. When this click happens, we're going to create a anonymous functions or a anonymous function or a arrow function. Let me close this up. And within here, we're going to create a arrow function, which is like an anonymous function. It is just composed uh, out of two empty parentheses and then a arrow sign. And please note, this is not the greater uh, equal or greater than sign because this is type like greater than equal. This is the correct sign. This is the arrow function sign, okay? And now we're going to open and close curly braces and within here, we're going to create a const for the random attack. Okay, and this random attack will be assigned a random attack function. So random attack damage. Let's open and close parentheses. We don't have this function right now, so we need to create it. And I misspelled random run. This should be a A, and here should be an O. Random uh, erect. <laughs> Attack. Okay. Now let's go ahead and create this function. This function will be a function which will be used in both cases, both player one and player two. So we're going to go down here and create a utility function, which is the attack function. So let's type in here function. Let's give it the name of random attack damage and within curly braces we will return a math object so a math dot floor and within here we're going to create another object another math object dot random which returns a random number as you saw, and we're going to multiply it 
by five. And then add plus two. So this just means that the function will generate a random number between five and two. So let's try this out. If I would console log down here, our function, let's see what happens and open and close parentheses. So we get five, if I refresh, we get two, six, six, why six, five, six, six, four, five, two, and so far and so on. Okay, so this is generating a, rum, a number. Oh yeah, it doesn't stop by five, it stops at six actually. Okay, so let's comment, actually, okay, let's delete this console log. Now we have our function up there. So this theoretically means if I click on this attack, well, nothing happens because I think I didn't finish up this random attack. Uh, it isn't called yet, okay. So when will be this called? When? Actually, I could test it in here. I could do also do here console log. Take this random attack and paste it in here. So if I click on attack now at player one, then a number will be generated. If I click on it again, another number, another number, another number, and another number. Okay, so far and so on. So let's reset our console. Let's go back in here. Not only that we want to generate that number, we also want to display that number somewhere. Where will be that number displayed? Well, as I said, if I attack with player one, it should be displayed on player two because I'm attacking player two. So we need to grab onto the object of player two. Actually, I'm going to grab onto player one, but modify it then. Not you, I need you. Player two. And not the object, we need to display it because I'm grabbing onto the stats. So we need to go to those intakes that we created from player two, for example. So intake damage, display damage player two. This is what we need. Now we're going to go back into our attack function and within here, we're going to gra uh, grab onto this const, and then dot inner HTML. And what this does is going to modify the inner HTML, so not the text, but the inner HTML itself. If it's a div, if it's whatever, it's going to modify it. So inner HTML, I'm going to assign it, and this time I'm going to use backticks, which are done here on a Mac for some strange reason, and I'm going to display minus. Now I'm going to use the iteration of random erect. Why do I have erect again? Because also here I have erect. Oh, whoa, whoa. Jeez Louise. Okay, TT. And there we go. So let's see what's, what is happening. Start game, click on attack. And let's take a look up here. And theoretically, this should generate the number and display it up here. Okay, it's down here, minus three. Now the problem now is that this minus three is going to stay here forever and we need to uh, get rid of it. But before we do that, let's do a few, a couple of few things. Uh, we also want to be able to, we also want to be able to change the colors. So as you can remember, we created here, up here, a color of normal damage. So I'm going to take this variable, go down here, and uh, we don't need this minus sign. We're going to, from the display damage, so from this we're going to style, exactly as in CSS, so we're going to use style. Dot color. And we're going to assign it the color of random, of normal damage. So let's try this again, hit start, hit attack, and we got our red color right here. Okay, this is good. 
Now we also want it. Hmm. No, wait. I'm going to do something else first of all. I'm going to make it disappear because now we're stuck with this minus three. And for this, we're going to need a functionality that will reset the display intakes. Okay, and this is actually going to take in a argument. What the argument is, is a variable that we can pass into a, into, into a function and the function does something with it. And as you can see, this function right here will be the same for attacking player one as also as attacking player two. So we're going to create this function and down here, in our utility function functions again. So let's use the function keyword and let's pass in here as the argument a display display damage. Not we don't go, we're not going to use player, just display damage. But as soon as we will pass within this function a player, a certain player that will be passed in into our functionality and it will be actually used within the function. So we want to check if this display damage, let me actually go in here, exists. Before we attack, let me refresh this again, before attacking, it doesn't exist. No damage is taken. But after we attack, it exists, okay? So let's think about it. We need to check its existence. So if display damage exists, then display damage will be styled by displaying it as none. So if we attack this free, and now let's go up here, you know, attack and let's pass in the display damage on player two. So exactly as what we assigned here to be where it should be displayed, we're going to uh, insert it in our reset display intakes. So I'm going to attack now and seeing that I'm generating down here a damage, but it's not displayed because as soon as we display it, we are so displaying it as none. This is bullshit. What we need to do is set it in a time functionality. So it appears and after, after a few seconds or after a certain time, it should disappear. So we're going to take this if, so as I said, we need to wrap this if statement into functionality, the time function. And we can use the function set timeout. So what this function will do, and we're going to use a arrow function within here because it's, it's, it's using a callback function. This function, as soon as a certain time passes, it launches its functionality. So for the time we're going to use 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. Okay, and now we're going to copy, cut and paste this in here. I'm going to also type in here comment of reset display damage, DMG, DMG, not DGM, DMG, okay. So theoretically, this should work. Let's try this out. Let's attack, minus two, and it's gone. That's it. If you want to make it longer, let's say, hey, where's our function? Down, down, down here. Then we could use, let's say, uh, two seconds or 2000. And start game, attack, one, two, and gone. Okay. That's it. Now we have our attack. Okay. 
we have our tech we we did our tech now let's attack again and we see that it's gone it's no not longer appearing where is that because as soon as this happens after two seconds it's going to display the element as none and it's going to remain that way with its style as displayed none it exists it really exists as you can see we we are attacking and we're giving damage but we cannot see our damage anymore and this is why up here in our player one attacks again we're going to go in copy this and we're going to i actually don't need this we're going to set style display and going to display it as block Why do I misclick? I hate misclicks. Okay, let's save this again and let's try it out. So one attack, one, two, and should be gone. It's gone. Another attack and one, two, and it's gone. Another attack and one, two, and it's gone. Okay, so this is working. Now, next thing that I want to do is when I attack player two, not only did I see this damage, but also take away from his life. And this is pretty easy. We're going to go in here, down here, and going to now take the object of player two, actually, dot. And because this is an object, I could access certain things from it. So actually, let me go up here and right underneath our object, let's say console log, we're going to console log our object, player one. Okay, let's see what happens. Now within a console, Hmm, have too many console logs, but we can see it. So here's our player one. There's an object which has, it's not in the right order, but you know that it has a life, a key of life with a value of 100, a key of defense with a value of 20, a mana with a value of null. Actually, it's in here. And even if I check the console log type off, not odd, off player one and hit save it tells me that it is a object okay so we're console logging game javascript from the line 60 so here okay so we can see it is an object now i can also access certain things from this object i could access player one dot life for example and instead of displaying me the entire player one uh a tree object it's going to only display me it's only only going to display the value which is 100 so with this being said if i go down here in our tech functionality and i say when this attack happens then from player 2 dot life dot life we are going to take away player two what am i doing so it's equal to player two dot life so it's initial life value minus the attack the attack of player one uh, capital p i misspelled attack again <laughs> There we go. Now, what is this attack? Later on, when we're going to handle our defense, this attack will be a const, which will have the attack. Okay, so this name of attack player one, which will be equal to the well, for now, it's going to only be equal to the random attack. Okay, so let's try this out. Mm, but you're not going to see this only if I console log it. So console log, I'm going to console log player two's life. So let's go into the game. Let's hit attack. Don't look up here, but rather look into the console. So attack, minus 5, and 
we all also logged that five and we see that player one so player two actually life is now 95 if i attack again it's we had we uh, dealt three damage and now it's 92 if we attack again it goes down again we'll also create within this functionality the armor effect which will take the amount of armor into consideration and modify the, 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 the real damage, we are now actually only giving the attack. So this is working. Now let's also display, or should we... We're actually pretty deep in, in the video right now, so I think I'm going to leave this for another video. But yeah, we have now managed to attack the player and deal damage. So let's copy this. Actually, I don't want to copy the console log, so you don't have to... You, you should just comment them out. Okay, so we're having this. We're going to copy this, attack. We're going to go to the player 2. And the player 2 attacks down here. Copy it in. I'm going to change this to... This to player 2 and this to player 2 and this to player 1 okay so basically the same thing okay guys so this is pretty much it for this video hope you enjoyed it so if you liked the video hit that thumbs up button if you didn't like it then dislike the video if you learned something then i'm extremely happy and if you want to keep on following my channel then hit subscribe and click on that notification bell Okay guys, so see you next time. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.